guys! So, you're probably wondering, where the hell have I been? I haven't posted a video since... let me look... February 25th. That is a while. Can we just talk about how horrible the stomach flu is? It just... I feel like it is one of the most awful, awful diseases on the planet. I mean, aside from like big ones like, you know, the obvious ones like cancer, AIDS, all those sorts of- not counting those! Talking about everyday sort of illnesses, stomach flu is like the worst of them. Oh my god. Especially this particular bug, which apparently is just like really making the rounds in the area where I live right now. Uh, my sister, the one with all the kids, apparently picked it up at her mom's group that she goes to and it wiped out her entire place like that. All of them had it like the same day, which... Oh god. And then they came over here two days later and I knew we were doomed. I had a feeling I'd probably be the first one to catch it. Surprisingly, I was the last one to catch it. But I still caught it. I, mean, I think it hit me the worst, which... Typical, things usually hit me about the hardest of anybody. So, yeah. And it hit on like the worst day for me anyway. It hit on uh, March 1st, which is the day that since Davy Jones died on Leap Day, and that will... <sighs> I can talk. February 29th only happens once every four years. So since this is not a leap year, we observe the day he passed on March 1st instead. Except that around 2 in the morning I came down with a stomach flu, so on a day that was already going to be emotionally shitty for me to begin with, I now also had pretty much my most dreaded freaking everyday illness possible. Not thrilling. Not fun. Not pleasant. 16 hours of non-stop throwing up. Everybody else had it for about 12 tops. I had it for 16 and then passed out and it probably would have gone on longer but I was passed out and finally chilled by the time I woke up. But can we just talk about how freaking horrendous this shit is? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> My poor nephew had it from both ends. I only had the throwing up, thank God, but... Oh. I just... I am not a fan of throwing up. It is probably my most dreaded thing of anything. I am the first to admit that I am completely emetophobic. I have phobia of throwing up. I'm pretty sure anybody who's known me longer than five minutes knows this because if anybody so much as has a cold anywhere near me, the first thing out of my mouth is, oh my god, there's no throwing up involved, is there? Every time. I have the biggest fucking phobia of it. It just, it, it's to a ridiculous degree with me. I will be the first to admit. And I'm sure I'm just like overly sensitive to this because I have had many illnesses with a lot of prolonged throwing up involved with them. One of the most notable being the notorious one when I was seven and missed two and a half months of school from some unknown stomach bug that just would not go. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. So every time I have ever had a stomach bug since then, some part of my brain has been absolutely paranoid on some level of Oh god, this isn't that again, is it? Even though I know logically the odds of me catching whatever the hell that was a second time, probably not too great, but it still wigs me the hell out. I just can not. Oh god, I so much as have like the teeniest bit of a queasy stomach and I am basically inconsolable over it because I'm so freaked out by it. Like, I can't even like express- just talking about this right now, I just felt- I just started sweating. Because I'm that freaked out by this topic. Oh my god. Ugh. It just... No. No. I do not do well with it. I do not do well with it. So yeah, like 2am. Actually, I had very little warning on the first round of it. 
Luckily, I have a bathroom adjoining to my bedroom, so this was not that big of a problem. Did that. Came back to bed. About ten minutes later, son of a bitch, I feel like I need to do it again. Went back in. Ended up sitting there for about an hour before it finally happened again. I'm sure I don't need to tell you. I'm pretty sure we have all been there, done that, had the whole sitting on the bathroom floor waiting for freaking forever for it to happen moment. It sucks. On the third go-round of this, I brought my iPod with me. I was sitting there playing Candy Crush. Bad call. Bad call. Not only were the fast movements and colors triggering my vertigo, making me feel more sick, it's candy. On what level did I think this was going to be a good plan? I, j I don't think sometimes. I really don't. Just on whatever level that it finally registered that I am playing a game about food, the second that that realization hit me, bleh, there it went again. So I toddled back off to bed. About another 50 minutes, right back in there. Tried to eat a Tums, couldn't even keep a Tums down. Tried to eat a second one, didn't work out much better that time. Long story short, pretty much all damn night, I think I spent way more time in there than I did in here. Which was shitty. I did not like it. Woke up from whatever time that I finally passed out for maybe an hour. Had to go right back in. At some point, around like noon, I finally like crawled on my hands and knees to the bedroom door and asked somebody to go get me a ginger ale and a bucket. Yeah. Most of the time when I have stomach flu, it typically carries on all night into the morning and then stops. This didn't stop at morning. This carried right on until late afternoon when I finally passed out. So from 2 a.m. till whatever 16 hours later is, well, to be fair, 16 hours from first time I threw up to last time I threw up, I'm not counting, still feeling nauseous till I passed out, so I guess I don't really have the exact number of hours, but regardless, it it was an awfully long time. And I was sitting there literally counting the hours because my sister had told me that it was 12 for them, so I'm like, okay, I can hang in there. I can do this. It's this time right now. I've been doing this, this since this time. There should only be this many more hours left in it. And then when the 12 hour mark passed, and I was still not feeling the tiniest bit better. Actually, I was feeling worse. It was actually speeding up and getting that much more frequent at that point. I was like, well, I'm fucked. Is this how it's gonna end? I'm pretty sure this might be how it ends, because for some reason, my brain always interprets throwing up as, you're gonna die. I don't know why my brain does this. Like, for real, every damn time, even though I logically know better than this, my brain is convinced every time I throw up, that it instantly means, clearly, gonna die. I don't know about myself sometimes, but yeah, it sucked. On top of that, I also had a fever. On top of that, because I didn't want to infect my Advair, I hadn't taken my asthma medicine, so I was also wheezing like crazy and struggling just to breathe through all of this, because I didn't want to get stomach flu germs on that, and then keep reinfecting myself every day that I go and use that. Which I think is pretty understandable, but because of that, I was coughing like crazy. And guess what? Apparently coughing like crazy is that much more of a trigger to make you throw up. Who knew? Holy freaking crap, that sucked. I have to wonder if that aspect hadn't been a thing, if maybe this would have been a lot more short-lived and a lot of it was just me re-triggering it by coughing, but... Oh my god, it was bad. So horrible. I do not wish that on my worst enemy. It is that bad. Just... Ugh. So the whole next day, I was like scared to even so much as drink anything. Much less eat anything. I don't think I ate anything the following day. Like, at all. Was terrified of the thought of food. Just... Mm -mm. The day after that, I think I ate a banana, a 
piece of toast and some rice over the whole day. Stayed down, even though I was still like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I trust my stomach entirely yet. Because, I mean, it still kept doing the weird gurgly thing, so I was like, oh god. Oh god. Every time I heard it make a noise, I was like, nope. 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 We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Ugh. Jesus. I... Mm. So, finally around the one week mark, I finally, like, ate a full normal-sized meal. Yes, I am that scared of it to where it took me a whole week to eat one full meal in a day. Yeah. I told you I'm that scared of it to where I just cannot deal. But, um... So that night, I wake up, 2 a.m. again, and I felt not. I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 oh hell fucking no, we are not doing a repeat of this. Luckily, nothing ended up happening, but I was like so overly paranoid that I was like in the bathroom with a bucket next to the toilet. I was like, nope, 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 not doing this, but if it does happen, I'm prepped. I still have the shit in here from last time. I, I guess I'm good to go if we have to do this, but I really don't want to do this. So, luckily, it did not end up being necessary. Went back to bed, woke up, felt fine. I was like, I don't know what the hell that was about. I would appreciate it if my stomach didn't feel the need to psych me out like that. But I'm glad it didn't happen that time. So I brought the shit back out the next day because I was like, I, even though I've scrubbed this thing down and Lysoled it to death, I still don't trust it to like not have stomach flu germs all over it. Because you don't really ever gain an immunity to that. Like, read up on studies on this, you only retain an immunity for about two weeks tops with stomach flu. So I am so paranoid of that shit, it is not even funny. So I brought it out and knock on wood, ever since then, I think I've been okay? We're like nearing the two week mark at this point, and I've finally worked up to the point where I'm eating a normal sized lunch and a normal sized dinner. I still haven't even added in breakfast yet, because I am still like that tweaked of I don't know if I trust my stomach yet to put in everything. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I just, I feel like I want reassurance. Am I the only one like this? Or, or are some of you guys like as weird over throwing up as I am? Because I feel like... I am probably the only person as wigged out by throwing up as I am. That's why I, it just makes me laugh when people have asked me if I'm bulimic. I'm like, ha ha ha, that's like hilarious because probably my biggest phobia of anything on planet Earth is throwing up. So I could never be bulimic even if I wanted to. Trust me. Just no, that shit would never happen. Anorexic? Yeah. Bulimic? Fuck no. But, oh, no. Oh my gosh, no. Oh. Yeah, so that was not fun. I'm hoping that at this point we may be far enough out to where I have Lysoled the entire house enough times to hopefully have killed all the germs on all the things and I hopefully don't have to worry. Although, yeah, that only helps in this house. That doesn't help for going out anywhere where there may still be sick germs floating around. I have been avoiding going out like the plague. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I have to go to the library later on in the week. Well, next week, I guess. 17th, 14th through the 17th, somewhere in there. But, yeah. I'm basically gonna see if I can pawn this off on my sister and get out of going because I am that wigged out by the whole germs thing. So, yeah. Anyway, because of that whole thing... This is why there has been no new lip balm reviews in that time span. Because I did not dare get stomach flu germs on any of those because with the little round sphere type lip balms, I can't just chop off the end of it and call it new. Like with a chapstick, this is one thing that I do prefer about the stick ones is if I use it while I'm sick, I can just cut off the end of it and the rest of it's fine. With the round ones, you can't do that. 
And it really bummed me out because I was getting ready to do the Pink Sugar Revo review. And I had used it for the first time late in the afternoon the day before I started getting sick. So I'm like, did I just infect that thing? I am pretty sure I just infected that thing. I don't think there's any way to really disinfect those, is there? So I kind of had to cut my losses on this one and buy another one of the pink sugar one. If anybody has info about whether or not those sort of germs continue to live on these things after X amount of time, let me know if I should just wait so and so long for that one to be safe again, or if, yeah, I should just toss that other one because I don't know. I haven't tossed it yet because I don't know for sure if I've ruined it, but I definitely put like a big black X on the bottom of it so I don't mix it up with the new one. And I know which one is the one I used right before I got sick. Yeah, I am that weird about this. Because I really don't want to catch that again. I cannot do another 16 hours of that. Oh my god. No. Just... No. <laughs> no, thank you. It just... Mm. Pretty much, stomach flu is like end of the world in my book. I just, oh god. And then having to wonder every time your stomach feels the tiniest bit weird for like a month afterwards, oh god, is it coming back? Again, I don't know if this is just me or if this is everybody. I think I'm babbling. I don't know. But yeah, when you can't even keep anything down for that many hours, it just, it starts to wear on you and you start to question whether or not you're going to be okay. I was trying to mantra to myself each time the act was actually happening. I'm trying to be as not gross as possible about a gross topic. I was trying to mantra to myself, I will be okay. This will stop. I will not be stuck in this forever. It's not going to kill me. I'm gonna be all right. I mean, it, it did cut down on some of the anxiety during the actual act of, you know, but it did not help at all with the anxiety in the waiting periods in between, because then it's like my mind made up for lost time and just went apeshit and made me freak out that much worse worrying about it. It was just like, oh, it was so bad. It's so bad. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know that there's much of a way of getting over such a phobia. I am sure as shit not gonna go to any sort of therapy that involves immersion therapy because no. 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 I know what they do for germaphobes and if it's anything, or if what they do for vomit phobia is anything like the germaphobia, no, it's not, I'll just live with my fear, thank you. Uh, uh. I mean, I was like, if it hadn't have sped up towards the latter end of it, I was actually questioning if maybe I should go to the ER, because it got really, really bad. And I mean, with certain other illnesses where I've had a lot of throwing up involved, I've actually had to go get a prescription for Zofran just to make it stop. I don't know if I'm just like really prone to excessive throwing up more so than normal people. I kind of think I might be, but yeah, because I mean like pretty much any medication that could have that as a side effect pretty much guarantee without fail makes it happen for me every time. So I feel like I'm just like really ultra sensitive to it and really ultra paranoid of it because of that. So ugh, it just I am not a fan of it at all. I just cannot deal with it. It just freaks me out so much. But, I mean, with the stomach flu, I don't know if taking something like Zofran would make it worse because you're not getting the bug out of your system and then it's kind of just incubating. So, I don't know. I, I mean, when I had it, it was basically to offset other medications and stuff, but I don't know if they even give that for stomach flu. Because that seems like it could potentially be dangerous if somebody used it for that. So, I don't know. It's hard to say, but... Ugh, gosh, I don't like this topic. I really don't like it. And I think I'm kind of just secretly hoping that other people watching this might actually 
relate on some level to how freaked I get by this and can tell me I'm not alone in this because, oh god. Oh god, I just, I got the heebie-jeebies so bad even just thinking about it. It's still way too in recent history for me to deal. Just, oh god. No. I mean, the whole logic thing of trying to reason my, with myself that as humans, I guess I should be lucky that we are humans and have the ability to even do that, because, like, take horses, for instance. They can't throw up, and if they get any sort of stomach bug or eat something they shouldn't have, they die. That's it. They're, uh, that's the end of it for them, because they can't bring it up, they just die. At least humans don't do that, so, I mean, there's that at least, but... Ah, oh, God, even that logic doesn't help very much because that only, for me, seems to stem the anxiety thing that much more and thinking, but what if I'm not getting all of the bug out and there's more of it and it's just multiplying and it'll eventually take me out? Like, for real, this is how my anxiety processes work. I am very guilty of cyclical thinking and I just get stuck in loops like, anxiety loops that I cannot break out of. Again, anybody who's known me longer than, like, five minutes knows that I have been diagnosed with just about every anxiety disorder known to man, so I guess I shouldn't be shocked that I have such irrational phobias over certain things, because it kind of ties in with the whole anxiety thing, but... Oh, God, I... God... I'm, like, freaking myself out even talking about it, and it's one of those things where you try and talk it out with somebody in person, they're like, okay, I don't want to hear about this, no, 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 don't want to hear it, so it's like, well, fine, I'll go talk to a camera and just get it out, and maybe I'll feel better, I probably won't, but maybe I will, I don't know, but, mm, just, ah, ah, I don't like it, I don't like it, I mean, I, I think I'd be hard-pressed to find any human being who did like it. I, I don't think anybody likes throwing up, but I mean, I imagine there is a difference between just really disliking it and being full-on phobic of it, like I am. Like, if a movie even has, like, someone throwing up in it, like, I instantly shut it off, just like, nope, I'm out, I'm out, I cannot deal, I'm out. Yeah. Even on a screen, my brain is somehow freaked of Oh god, what if I somehow catch it? Even though it's like, that doesn't even make sense. You can't catch germs through a TV. It's, it's one of those things that it just, it's irrational, and I know it's irrational, but yet it doesn't stop my brain from freaking out about it. It's kind of like the whole death germs thing with, like, anything involving death on the TV. Like, if I am trying to eat or drink anything, like, this is the weirdest fucking phobia. I may be the only person on Earth, for all I know, who's like this. Correct me if any of you are like this too, but... Okay, if I'm eating or drinking anything while watching something that somehow involves somebody dying on it, I cannot finish that thing that I was eating or drinking because I am somehow convinced that now there's, like, death cooties or something. I don't even know. I don't even know. But it's like, I am pretty much convinced that if I, like, finish eating or drinking that thing, that I will die. Because I watched a thing involving death and somehow watching that translates to somehow infecting my food or... I do like I said, I'm aware that it's irrational. I know it makes no logical sense. I'm aware of that part. And I try and reason with myself on that. Yet if I try and force myself to finish it, like, nope. It just... I can't do it. I can't. Do it. I have been like that since I was a tiny ass little kid. It's the same thing with throwing up. Anything on TV. Same thing. Like I said, I don't know if it's just me, if I'm the only one, or if there's other people that have that weird little quirk. Am I the only one? Is there a name for that? I just, other than batshit crazy? But, I mean, for all I know, maybe this is like its own disorder and has a name to it. I don't know. But, it's just so weird. <laughs> and I know it's fucked up. I am well aware of that. I am well aware I am crazy, so you don't need to tell me. I know. I know I am. I know I'm irrational. I know I am not quite right in the head. 
so yeah <laughs> anyway yeah um but anyway so yeah basically i originally just came on here to say i haven't been around because i've been getting over stomach flu and somehow it turned into a half an hour rant on how much throwing up sucks and how much it freaks me out yeah basically all i needed was like a little notification saying this is why i haven't been around but i'll be around more now and it turned into this I don't know guys, I don't know. I don't edit my videos, you know that, so pretty much whatever I record is what you guys get. So. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. It's just mostly, at this point, just energy-wise, trying to get back to, like, normal. It always takes me forever to bounce back from any illness. It could be a cold, and I'm still having energy issues, like, a month down the line. So... I guess I shouldn't be that surprised that I'm still just physically wiped out by this bug. This one was so bad that I actually slept most of the day. Like, I woke up to throw up, basically, and would go back to sleep. That was the entirety of the day. For most people, that probably doesn't sound that weird, but for me, that speaks volumes of how sick I was, because normally, if I'm sick, I can't sleep. I'm a person who cannot nap. I don't know why this is. I seem to be physically incapable of napping unless I drug myself to sleep or drink so much I pass out. Otherwise, it does not happen. I have tried to nap. I just, for whatever reason, cannot nap. Even as a little kid, couldn't nap. Drove my parents crazy because of it. But yeah, I am not a napping person. So the fact that I spent most of the day asleep actually kind of weirded me out because I was like, oh my god, I must be really, really sick if I'm sleeping basically all day. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was weird. I mean, it'd be interesting to see just under normal circumstances if I wasn't sick, what it's like to like take a nap like a normal person. But like I said, it just, for some reason, it does not happen for me. I'm the only one that can't nap. Any of you guys like that? Because I know most people love napping, and I'm, like, jealous. I'm like, I'd, I'd like to know what it's like to be able to nap whenever you want. Just, like, lay down, take a nap. That sounds lovely. But <laughs> for some reason, I am incapable of it. I don't know why that is. But yeah, my parents have both told me that even when I was really, really little, did not nap. Might have something to do with why I have always been so undersized that I didn't get enough sleep growing up. Maybe. But, um, anyway, yeah. This has more than covered just the gist of things like I was originally planning on coming on here and saying, so... Yeah, before this officially hits the half an hour mark, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, so yeah, I should be back to more of a normal schedule soon? Soon-ish? I don't know. I'm gonna try for as soon as possible anyway, though. So... Till next time. Bye! And sorry for all the TMI. I am totally sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry for that, because, yeah, I agree. This video has been basically pretty gross.